from Coalfield House in College Park, Maryland. This is ACC basketball with the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest visiting the Terrapins of Maryland. For Lefty Grizzell, the wait for career win number 500 is over. His next goal, another conference victory. The last of those came in the season's first meeting with Wake Forest, a 64-62 thriller in Winston-Salem. That defeat started a four-game conference skid for the injury-riddled Deacons, who are now four and seven. Today, Carl Tacey may have the healthiest club he's seen since the first of the year, with the leading assist man in the league, Tyrone Bogues, ready to give those healthy players the ball. Muggsy also leads the conference in steals and has created as much excitement as any of the league's premier big men. Bogues is the smallest man on the ACC's smallest team. They've had trouble on the boards this year, but match up very well with Maryland inside. The Terps have the league's top scorer, junior Len Bias, averaging almost 20 a game. In that first meeting with Wake, he had 26 points and five rebounds. His counterpart up front for Wake is Kenny Green, fifth in the league at scoring at 17.4. Even though he has faced a variety of defenses designed to stop him, Green is also the second leading rebounder in the ACC. It's a matchup of teams hungry for a win and a matchup of veteran coaches in the ACC, Carl Tacey and Lefty Grizzell as Wake Forest meets Maryland live from College Park. This is ACC basketball with Clemson, Duke, Georgia Tech, Maryland, North Carolina, North Carolina State, Virginia, and Wake Forest. This live coverage is brought to you by Budweiser, by Piedmont Airlines, by Hardee's, by Jefferson Pilot, by Mazda, by Holly Farms, by Gillette, in North Carolina by NCNB National Bank, in South Carolina by South Carolina National Bank, and in Virginia by Central Fidelity Bank. It's a spring-like day in College Park, Maryland, but thousands of fans have come indoors to see Wake Forest against the Terrapins. Good afternoon, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Billy Packer, and it's great to have you with us for ACC basketball this afternoon. Billy, both these teams know by now they're not going to win the ACC regular season championship. What's their motivation this afternoon? Well, Mike, when you think back just a couple of weeks ago, you know, they both were right in the thick of the race. I think both of these teams had the potential to go into the ACC tournament and do well, and obviously both of them had the potential to get bids to the NCAA tournament. So there's a lot of potential there. I think from a coaching standpoint, both Carl Tacey and Lefty Giselle want to start establishing a new plane. You know, we're only a week or so away from getting ready for the tournament, and you want to see your team start doing the things well that they did at their peak points throughout the course of this season. Wake Forest was doing very well before they had all those injuries, but they're healthy again. They're healthy, but they've been on the road, and when you're on the road, you have a very difficult time reorganizing yourself, getting back into good surroundings where you can practice and work out the kinks. They haven't had a day of rest because they're playing against the premier teams in the league, and all of them have been on the road. you got two of the great players in the conference, two of the great players in the country, Bias and Green, going against each other. Well, they're always fun to watch, and I would agree with you. I think that uh, Lenny Bias and Kenny Green are two of the very premier forwards, probably out of the top eight forwards in the whole country. These are two of them, and uh, they're just exciting ball players. They have similar styles. I don't think anybody has a more beautiful jump shot to watch than Lenny Bias, nor better inside moves than Kenny Green. Very quickly, with Lefty winning his 500th, does that help Maryland now to get that off their back? Well, Lefty said it wasn't important, but I really felt, and we had three games in a row there in the conference where they tried to get that 500th, and I think it really started to weigh on the ball club. So I'm sure everybody in the Maryland campus have to see that go by the board. All right, should be a good one. Maryland and Wake Forest, and we'll be back with the starting lineups for today's game right after this from Budweiser. This Bud's for everyone who keeps things rolling in the mighty Mississippi. Break away barge, break away barge, please respond. Let's get him. This is a nice building, we're right below here as we all the way out. I'll come around in the port side and bump her there. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. Yeah. 
our flight. We have over 60 departures daily from New York. That's our flight 460 to us. There's a new major airline in America. Over the last five years, they've purchased more new jets than any other airline. They've added 6,000 new employees. And they've helped make reservations for 60 million people. America's newest major airline with a very familiar face. Piedmont Airlines, may I help you? Now, there's a totally new system for personal money management. A system of essential and new financial services that work in tandem, one with the other, to help you reach your financial goals. It's the first financial system from First National. The comprehensive First Financial Report and your personal banker help make it work. The system can put you in control. The First Financial System, available only at First National Bank of Maryland. Wake Forest against Maryland. We're live at College Park, Maryland. Wake Forest comes in 14 and 10 overall, 4 and 7 in the ACC. Maryland is 20 and 10. Maryland 5 and 6 in the ACC. Right now, let's take a look at the starting lineup for both of these ball clubs. Wake Forest, 14 and 10 overall, 4 and 7 in the ACC. Up front, they have the number 5 scorer in the conference, Kenny Green, the 6'7 junior from Eustis, Florida. He'll be matched up with a 6'5 senior, Lee Garber, 8.6 points a game. The center at 6'7, 195 from Sandy Spring, Maryland, Charlie Thomas, averaging almost 6 rebounds a contest. Delaney Rudd, the number 8 scorer in the conference, will start at the shooting guard. And the human assist, Tyrone Muggsy Bogues, the sophomore from Baltimore, will start at the point for the University of Maryland 20 and 10 overall 5 and 6 in the ACC the number one score in the conference Len Bias had one forward almost 20 points a ball game Adrian Branch a senior 6'8 185 he's the number four score in the conference at the other forward Derek Lewis is the center of freshman 6'7 195 a premier shot blocker and the senior starting today Jeff Adkins at one guard 6'5 185 averaging five points a game and Chuck Drizel 6'2 170 another senior from Silver Spring Maryland. Here's the officiating crew that will control today's game. Lenny Orts, Jerry Donahue, and David Dodge. Dodge, the uh, referee in the middle of your picture. And we will be back with the start of today's ball game. Wake Forest against Maryland from College Park right after this. From Dr. Tom Oakley, whose temper kicked off every time his engine ran on, Gulf prescribes the gas with guts to help stop engine run on. For David Garcia, whose diesel rabbit couldn't get hopping, the Gulf screen filters his fuel for starts quick as a bunny. For Arthur Harris, whose unmade gasoline left him cold, there's Gulf's gas with guts with extra octane for quick pickups. Gulf, everything we do makes driving better for you. It's a big step, Tom. I'm still gonna go to college, Dad, but after the Army. I thought you wanted to be an electrical engineer. I'll be learning about electronics. Then I can qualify for the Army College Fund. If you qualify, the Army College Fund can help you accumulate over $25,000 for tuition. So you're gonna be a soldier? Be all that you can be. And an engineer. Find your future. Be a good one. In the Army. And roses as you're spending it right when you buy Haviland Motor Oil. A quart of 10W40 is only 79 cents. And you get more for your money, too, when you buy Texaco Antifreeze at only $3.97 a gallon. Tacey, the head coach of Wake Forest, hoping his team finally healthy and they can get back on the winning track in the ACC. And Lefty Grizzell, who has passed that 500 milestone at Maryland. And here are the matchups. And we do have one change in the starting lineup. Mark Klein is in there at a forward spot. So Garber goes to the center spot. He's played all five positions this year. And of course, senior day. So Maryland starting Chuck Grizzell and Jeff Adkins in the backcourt. Wake in the gold uniforms with the white trim and Tyrone Mudsy Bogues, who now leads the ACC in assists by percentage points over Kenny Smith of North Carolina. 
There you see his own defense by Maryland right at the outset. Tipped in by Kenny Green off the miss from Mark Klein. Klein coming back from uh, an ankle injury. Chuck Kepley back with the ball club after arthroscopic surgery. 2-1-2 full court zone press by uh, Wake Forest and then they're gonna drop back into a zone of their own. Adkins and Chuck Grizzell outside for Maryland. Branch, nice pass in the lane to Lewis. And a hand check called on Lee Garber. That'll be his first. I don't think the basket will count. Going to see a very unusual uh, defense if Lee Garber's uh, first two moves defensively as an indication of what they're going to do. He's playing in the middle, but he's going to chase all over the court. So watch number uh, 34, Lee Garber, in the middle of that zone. Watch how much territory he's going to try to cover. Rizal comes outside, gives it to Branch, opening seconds of the ball game, 2 nothing Wake Forest. is all over Branch. This is Drizel with a first shot, and they've got it. Great way to start senior day, isn't it? It really is. Chuck Drizel hit the last four baskets, in re the last four points in regard to the win over Townsend, Maryland, so he's on a streak right now. 2-2. Two, 1-2-2 two. Two. One, two, two zone. Delaney Rudd in the middle to green, off to Bowles. Rudd. Good shooter, but short on that one as Atkins got in his way. Rudd with a rebound. Dishes it off, but he is fouled as he passed by Adrian Brand. Delaney Rudd realized when that foul was called, he should have thrown the ball back up at the basket. He would have got a two-shot foul there. The way it stands, he'll be taking the ball out of bounds. Tyrone Bogues' ability to penetrate through a zone is, is an offense all within itself. If you can get inside that zone, as he does so often, then as the zone collapses, you dish back out to people who have open jump shots. Bogues will now run the club, averaging 7.3 assists a ball game. And he's become a much better shooter, which has really helped his game. Rudd from long range won't go. Green offensive rebound and put it in. Super hands by Kenny Green. That ability to pop the ball just helped him put it right back up inside. 4-2, Wake Forest on top. Good Whistle, call. foul in the backcourt on Bogues. Or is it on Drizel? I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's going to be on Chuck Drizel using his elbow to try to move that double team away. Keith Gatlin will check in for Chuck Brazell, and Lewis comes in up front. That gives a big backcourt now with Gatlin and Lewis out there. The Speedy Jones, rather, is going to play in the backcourt. And Branch will remain at forward. 4-2 Wake. Bogues into the corner. Mark Klein with a jumper goes down. 6-2 Wake Forest. Klein uh, on a pretty good shooting tear himself. Had a good game against North Carolina since coming off his injury. Continues. Gatlin gets it up to Lewis. Gatlin to Lewis. He'll take his first shot. A little strong. Oh, a great rebound. Branch puts it up again and again and got that one. That play was made possible by Derek Lewis. Is going to the offensive boards with a super rebound. It's six four. Wake by a pair with seventeen twenty two to go. First half. Officials telling Derek Lewis to keep his hands off. Kenny Green looking for the lob. alley -oop. Green missed the shot. Branch had his hand on the loose ball and it went out of bounds. Kenny Green really back in behind that zone, knew the lob was available, and the pass was thrown just a little bit too far from the basket for him to jam it. Rudd the Bogues, they leave him all alone, and this year he'll take that shot. What I say about Wake Forest, every time I think they can't possibly participate in the game, they come they in and do. play solid basketball. Bias double team, has it knocked away. Three on two break, Rudd goes right around Branch off the Bogues. Missed the shot and the tip won't go. And save, the Deacons have the ball. Super hustle by Delaney Rudd. Now Keith Gatlin saved the basket on that fast break. He got in Bogues' way. Notice Tyrone Bogues put that up with the left hand at layup. Branch comes out to try to double team on Green. There's Bogues again. Lefty Grizel up, stopping, wanted to walk, did not get it. Garber. Rebound goes to Speedy Jones. Wake Forest does not score. They drop back quickly in that 1 2 2 zone. Branch to Gatlin. This is Len Bias. Basket would have counted if it had gone. He was fouled by Mark Klein. 
shows you the concentration that Lenny Bias has in that jump shot and, and the great vertical leap. Very few guys have the combination of the ability to leap vertically and uh, way up in the air and then still have the soft shot. I mentioned this before, the first guy that came along in this league is probably David Thompson that had that ability to just jump so high and yet still have the good shot. Bias will go to the line in every offensive category in the ACC. He ranks in the top 10. He is the number one scorer. Hits this free throw, 77.6% shooter on the season. I think it looks like Maryland's getting ready now to set up some kind of pressure defense themselves, but it's so hard to press Wake Forest because they really have four guards in the ball game, and, and including Tyrone Bogues, who pretty well handles the press himself. And with Bogues, you don't need the other three, do you? Maryland goes man to man. 8-6, Wake Forest by two. Bogues guarded by Gatlin. This is Garber. Very steady player to Kenny Green. Can't get the outside jump shot. Lewis with another rebound. Lewis has 90 block shots this year. That's awesome. Branch trying to penetrate. Nice pass off. Shot won't go for Jones. Branch with a rebound. Adrian came to play today. That overall team size that Maryland has, plus their real quick leaping ability, should pose a lot of problems for Wake Forest on both ends of the court off the boards. Tied at eight with 15.27 to go. First half of play. Mark Klein. Branch has all three of Maryland's rebounds, officially. There's a case where Lewis tried to fight Bogues' screen. What's so tough when Muggsy Bogues sets a screen on you? You know, he's down around your waistline, so you try to push him off, you hit him right in the face. <laughs> There's timeout on the court. 15.22 to go, first half. Wake and Maryland tie. Teamwork, the essential ingredient on any basketball team. The job each person must do if the team is to succeed. At Food Line, success depends on teamwork too. Each member of our team is trained to do a specific job well, whether it's cutting meat or putting groceries in your car. When you visit Food Line, you know everybody is working together to help you save money on your groceries. That's the only way we know how to play the game. Introducing three all-new 1986 Mazda B2000 trucks. Trucks so advanced the words that describe them best may never have been used to describe any truck. Words like roomy, quiet, responsive, aerodynamic, good handling, smooth riding. And the words great value also apply to the SE5, the LX, and the B2000 experience. The 1986 line of Mazda trucks. Experience it. Isn't it time for the great taste of roast beef? Not here it isn't. You can go here for some, but you'll go hungry. Where can you find great tasting roast beef? It's here. It's Hardy's new roast beef sandwich that's juicier than ever. It's all here at Hardy's. With your choice of tangy barbecue or horseradish sauce on a toasted bun. So if you have to ask, where do you get the roast beef? It's here. It's all here at Hardy's. Maryland and Wake Forest tied at 8 with 15 minutes, 22 seconds to go. First half of play, Wake Forest basketball. Delaney Rudd set to inbound. Rudd, incidentally, uh, the 13th all-time leading scorer for Wake Forest. He needs uh, about 60 points, and he will pass number 12. Do you know who that was? No. Billy Packer. Is that right? That was number 12. Back in the days so where they didn't score that many points, I guess. That, that, is, that is quite an achievement. Only Packer. played three years now. But that's right. That's right. These guys play four now. They. Branch reached in and knocked it away from Rudd. But that shows you how unimportant that is to you. <laughs> when, <you're 12. laughs> when you don't remember? No, who cares? It was fun playing. That was important. That's right. Gatlin looking inside, tied at 8, 14 49 to go. Bias, he wants that jumper. He's just unstoppable. You know, I really think in watching Lynn Bias play, you have got to force him away from that corner. I mean, every time he gets the ball, just let him go baseline. Make him put the ball on the floor with his left hand. Because if he's going to go right and get down on that baseline, he is absolutely a killer. Bogues outside, Maryland with a 10 to 8 lead. Derek Lewis and Kenny Green, Wake Forest wanting to go the, inside to Green if they can get him the ball. Delaney Rudd, strong off the glass. Garber, follow shot, won't go, rebound Lewis. That was affected by Derek Lewis. Went up to block the shot, did a good job intimidating and got the rebound too. 
Speedy Jones short on his jumper. Bias fighting for the rebound. We have a jump ball situation. Maryland's ball. The announcers for this game are approved and selected by Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, duplication, or reception without the written permission of Raycom Sports, Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions is prohibited. Branch left all alone. He likes that shot. Adrian's intensity level looks very good today. Remember the Georgia Tech game That's where right. they came back out after the Clemson game and, and really showed good intensity. And he looks like he wants to play his final game at the uh, Cole Fieldhouse. Maryland with 10 straight points, and Branch has hit three out of four. Can't get that ball inside to Kenny Green. And we've seen him have that problem before, Billy. This is Garber with a long-range jumper. Lee Garber, senior out of Kingsport, Tennessee, with his first two. Wake stays in that 2-1-2 two, two full court press. Garber just Klein not capable of getting up in the air quite high enough, but Garber might have been able to pick that one off. Branch helps you a lot being as big as he is on that pressing throw, passes over people. Keith Gatlin's got the shot. That little set shot. Gatlin's starting to take that shot more and more now, and uh, he's a fellow that, if he can shoot 10 or 12 times a game, he's gonna be a very solid middle team scoring average and makes them so tough to defense because their inside game is awesome with Bias and Branch. Against Clemson, he had 14 out of 15 shots from just about that spot on the floor. 10 in a row, which tied a school record. This is Rudd, nice penetration and score. Oh, good little run. scoop shot by Delaney Rudd. That comes from hours of playing under game situations. Have the feel for that shot. Maryland easily beating the press, leading 14 to 12, and now Gatlin will set up the offense. Nice pass, Speedy Jones. Jones hits the jumper, 16-12. Well, the team that Lefty has on the floor right now can surround the zone very well because they have four very good perimeter shooters. Bose being guarded man-to-man. -man. That's a tough job for Gatlin. Bose is just so quick. Green again over Lewis. He got that one. We're seeing some excellent individual forward type play with Kenny Green, Branch, and Bias. Green has made three of five. Dangerous pass by Branch, but nice pass from Gatlin to Lewis. How about the catch? That was a tough ball to catch. Came right through the defense. And on the move, Lewis still was able to hang on. Maryland now by four, 18-14. Branch, the leading scorer for Maryland with six. Green has six for Wake. This is Kenny Green, low foul, made the bucket. There was a case where Wake Forest was able to spread Maryland out in that man-to-man. -man. Left Green just setting up down low with Lewis on his back, and there are not many people in the country, if any, can handle Kenny Green when he gets the ball in this position. There's Lewis all by himself, nobody to help from the weak side. That was Keith Gatlin's side over there. He was on the... He was on Delaney Rudd, but didn't come back in to help out. I think Lewis made another mistake. He touched him on the arm and then let him go. He should have made sure he wasn't going to score on that one. Green at the free throw line hits it. There's a timeout on the court here in College Park with 11.27 to go. First half of play. It's Maryland on top of Wake Forest, 18-17. Back after this from Budweiser. Buds for everyone who's got what it takes to make his own breaks. Are we on? This is Paul Martinez reporting to you from the International Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. From the International Airport, this is Paul Martinez reporting. Thank you, Paul, and welcome to the news team. Hold on, you do. To Paul Martinez, my son. She's here. We'll be right down. There's a new major airline in America. Over the last six years, they've added 45 new destinations. And to make getting to those destinations easier, they've added 90 jets, one new delivery a month. Sign here and she's all yours. My pleasure. America's newest major airline, Piedmont. The up-and-coming airline has arrived. 27 to go first half. Maryland on top of Wake Forest by one. Stay tuned. At the end of the ball game, we'll be picking a Holly Farms player of the game from each school. 
Mike, neither team's been able to get any kind of a running game going. Both teams very patient offensively, setting up in a half-court situation and really keeping pretty good floor balance. But I think the first team that can get something going with their running game is the team that have an opportunity to move out a pretty good spread here. Wake shooting 47% in the first half and Maryland shooting 67% so far. That's on 8 out of 12 from the floor. But as you said, they got a lot of good perimeter jump shooters out there. Both teams. There's full court pressure. A little change now. Man-to-man -man pressure. Branch matched up with Bogue, so they'll try to get the ball off to somebody else. And bad pass taken away. And who gets it? Guess who? Bogue. And Adrian Branch made a big mistake. He picked up his That's dribble. Right. And when you pick up your dribble, obviously you can't move off that point. Really allowed Wake Forest to collapse all on everybody else. And Wake Forest has terrorized people all year long with their defense and the fact that they forced nearly twice as many turnovers as they commit themselves. And that's Mark Klein out of Williamson, West Virginia. He can shoot that shot. Four Brad, points for Klein. Brad sees Bogues come and said, I don't want this guy around me. Give it to somebody else. Lewis gets it, double team, finally to Gatlin. Bogues almost got another one. Yes, he did. This is Len Bias. It's Wake by one. Lewis inside. Oh, nice. Tipped in his own there. Boy, he is so quick getting off his feet. Uh, he must feel wonderful. He's one of the few times this year he's in a situation where he didn't have somebody three or four inches taller and 40 pounds heavier pushing him around inside. That's right. He'll be some kind of uh, forward, either small or big forward, if they ever do have a center to go with him here. That green travel. But in effect, he'd be a secondary rebounder, and also, from a shot blocking standpoint, he'd be coming off from the weak side. He already has 90 this year, has blocked 10 in a game twice, and he's only 6'7", 195. A great timing. Gatlin gets it to Branch. What a difference when Gatlin handles the balls to the start of the press. Gatlin, Speedy Jones, Branch, Lewis, and Bias. Lewis put a shoulder down, forced his way in, almost tipped in his own miss. Bogues. Kenny Green, and he's fouling the way in. Adrian Branch reaching in, but again, there's the running game. The first time we've seen it from Wake Forest. Both teams are capable of getting to move on the break or even the delayed break. Here's Kenny Green coming down. Adrian Branch going in, getting a good piece of the arm. It's number two on Adrian Branch. Garber comes back in, and Bogues is going to the bench for Wake Forest and checking in Chuck Kepley. Number 22 into the ballgame. Kepley coming off uh, arthroscopic surgery on his left knee. It's still heavily bandaged. Thomas also in the ballgame, so Wake Forest just trying to rest their players a little bit. It's awful hot in this gym today. Great temperature outside, almost like a spring day Boy, here in Gorge, Washington, D.C. Kenny Green, one out of two. Make it two out of three from the line. It's 20 all with 9.45 to go. I and guess, he has 10 points. I guess we're officially in College Park, Maryland. That's right. D.C. area. A lot easier bringing the ball up the court when Bogues is out of there. Yes, that's like night and day. And here's that unusual 2-1-2 two -two defense with Garber running all over the court. Bias tries to go baseline. A lot of contact in there with Charlie Thomas. No whistle, and it will be Branch from outside. Missed the shot. And here comes Wake on the break. It's a four-on-three right now. Get it into the corner to Kepley. Crowd want to walk. They want to walk, but those are good offensive moves. A head pump fake. Keeping the back foot solid. Good execution. This is Garber. Now to Kenny Green. Nice move on Green. Stripped by Lewis. Garber comes up with a loose ball. Missed the shot. Kenny Green had to cover up in the lane. He was in danger of being trampled on that one. Gatlin. Great pass. Oh, what a pass. Here comes the running game for Maryland. I really believe their team is a lot better when they get that up-tempo going. Four points for Speedy Jones. Rudd penetrates. Oh, that's a foul. Missed the shot. Two Maryland players fighting for the rebound. Finally, Bias gets it from Lewis. Hey, this game's getting a little bit rugged right now. There have been some fouls both ways. That's a replay of the last possession. Only a different player. Gatlin made another superb pass. Keith Gatlin hits the open man as well as anybody around. As I pointed out, Mike, when Maryland gets their tempo game going up and down that court, it's a pretty good fast 
backbreaking club because they have a lot of guys that can run. A lot of guys can take it to the hoop. And good passing by Keith Gatlin. That's eight points for Adrian Branch, and it's 24-20, Maryland by four. Branch is at four of six field goal attempts today in his last home game in a Maryland uniform. Number three all-time score. Tyrone Bogues back in the game trying to settle things down. Wake Forest would like for this game to be played half court, both ends of the floor. No running game. 25-20, this is Maryland's biggest lead of the ball game with 8-10 to go. Thomas, moving on, Bias, short for the jumper, Branch with a rebound. This is Gatlin. Oh, Branch from downtown. That was an NBA three-pointer. About 25 feet. Branch has hit five of his last six shots, and now Maryland leads by seven points. Kenny Green with three men on him scores anyway. He and Bias are a lot alike. You know, if, if they need to take the shot, they'll take it anyhow. That's right. They just create it. They go up in the air high enough to get it off. Branch gets it off to Keith Gatlin with 7.20 to go. Maryland by five. Branch with a hot hand. Speedy Jones. Fake. Jones oh. missed five. For G in the air. Garber with a 15-footer. It won't go, and Bias with a rebound at the other end. Now, if I were a Maryland player, I'd make sure Lenny Bias touches it this time. That's and right. Let's let him have a shot. Those were two incredible plays. Here he goes. Oh! Holy cow! That was really something. And you're right, Billy, he soared three straight times. And the crowd on its feet here at Cole Fieldhouse. Bogues to Green, being guarded by Terry Long right now. Won't go on the jumper. Here's the follow by Thomas and the block by Bias. And no foul. Lenny Bias. Whoa. He's a man possessed. I right know. And the crowd stands. Cheers, and you know a lot of it's got to be for Lenny Bias. 6.19 to go. First half, Maryland, 29, Wake Forest, 22. Being a Jefferson Standard agent does have its drawbacks. George, tell me about universal life. Fortunately, there's nothing we like more than helping George. you plan for the future. Would you recommend stocks or mutual funds? With there insurance are... and a wide range of financial services. Hey, George, you got a minute to talk about IRAs? So when you have a question about your future, ask one of our agents about financial services from Jefferson Standard. Hey, George. Our business is your future. Cut. Okay, Dinah. Crew, out for lunch. Out? Hey, fellas, wait. Don't go out. No, I got these new Holly Farms chicken nuggets. They're fresh, and they're made from fillets. There's nothing like them. Don't go, guys. But there's not enough, Dinah. Well, I already stir-fried some, and I got some golden fried chicken nuggets, and I can do some more real fast. I did those real fast. I can do some more real fast. Thank you, sweetie. Uh, they're time trimmers, you know. <laughs> Good. They do a fast standard. Of course. America's cooking with Holly Farms time trimmer chicken fast. That's too fast. Not as fast as they can eat them. Want some partial to go with that, big fella? <laughs> <laughs> ACC coverage is brought to you by Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Well, we made a comment. It'd be a good idea to let Lenny Bias touch it after those two incredible plays on the other end of the court. And oh. there he is. Some timing. Just suspended in air. And with that assist, Billy, Keith Gatlin ties John Lucas' single-season assist record at the University of Maryland. And you remember what a great player Luke was here. Well, it's great to see John get another chance. And you, you just hope that he understands how people have gone out of their way to, to give him those multiple chances down at Houston. He was a quality kid growing up in Durham, quality player here at Maryland. He has had that problem with the narcotics. Now he's back, and I saw the other night he played, at, he played. Uh, played for Houston. And I just hope that he can uh, get that part of his life straightened out because he's been a real credit to the game otherwise. Amen.
Since Wake led 20 to 19, they have been outscored by the Terrapins 9 to 2. Branch and Bias have done most of the damage. And Gatlin already has seven assists in the first half. This is Mark Klein. Jones on him to Delaney Rudd against Jeff Adkins, who's checked back in, and Rudd will draw the personal from Adkins, who's first. Now, there's a case where Delaney Rudd used his left hand to shield the defender. He did not use it to gain an advantage, which is a good, solid play. Had he used that left hand to swipe the defender's hands away, it would have been a foul on Rudd. So a real good play by Delaney Rudd. Rudd hitting 81% uh, of his shots. You'll learn a little bit more about Delaney Rudd. He visited uh, with Brenda Hughes of the ACC Sports Center, and we'll have that coming up for you at halftime. Rudd shoots more than 81%, although he's not listed in the conference standings because he does not shoot enough free throws to qualify, but that does not uh, change the fact he is a, a very good free throw shooter. Had only been to the line 53 times prior to today's game. And really, uh, Delaney's the kind of guy that is capable of going inside and drawing some more fouls. Had the big 26 points against Maryland in the last game with that terrific comeback Wake Forest made That's before right. they uh, were stopped at the end. Rudd has four. Maryland's lead is now down to five. This is bias. That's not going. That, and oh, what is that? that would have been an incredible tip in. Here comes Bones just flying through people. Rudd couldn't control it. That last shot by Len Bias is where he came away from the basket. He's the kind of guy that likes to turn to his right or he likes to be moving towards the basket, not falling away. Klein from outside won't go. Adkins with a long rebound. Gives it up to Gatlin. Speedy Jones. And boy, when Gatlin runs, this team can really light it up, can't they? I was watching Speedy Jones, and he gave Gatlin that sign when he was about 30 feet away from the basket that he was going for the lob, and Gatlin was able to pick it up. Delaney Rudd from long range, high off the rim, the rebound to Jones. And Keith Gatlin now owns the single season assist oh, record. Move. And he left Tyrone Bogues in his wake. And the thing about Gatlin that you have to like. He is such a pleasant kid and such a joy to be around. And he's only a sophomore. You gotta like that even better. Adkins from long range. Won't go. Bias with a long rebound off Klein's fingertip. Nice pass to Terry Long. Oh, and a follow by Jones. I'd like to know where Jones and Bias went for lunch today because they both rode into the, the gym in the same car. <laughs> and they are getting miles off the floor. I think they went to the airport and watched those planes take off. I don't, I don't know, but they are getting up in the air. It's 33-24 Maryland, and I can honestly say I've seen Maryland play several times this year. I've never seen them this spectacular. Klein won't go. Adkins rebound. Maryland's getting a hand in the face of the jump shooters from Wake on every shot. Gatlin settles him down and gets ready for another show. And there he Another alley-oop. Good defense that time by Klein. Look at Bogues. And Gatlin blocked it. Garber follows and scores for Wake. That was a big bucket. Big change of possession. Could it have been an 11-point lead? It's cut back to seven. Four for Garber. Lefty probably wants the team to get back in a little bit more semblance of offense. Those spectacular plays are good. But you want to keep that ball on the floor some. Gatlin. 35-26. I hesitate to say this. Lefty Drizel going for career win 501. <laughs> 257 left. Garber trying to penetrate bias. Nice defense, and Garber got the roll. Yeah, that wasn't spectacular, but it's still two points. That's you know, right. They don't score him on the degree of difficulty here. <laughs> Good play by Garber. He gives a signal to Carl Tacey. He'd like to come out and take a little rest. Real solid player. Adkins. Speedy Jones left alone by that zone. A lot of room in the corners against that zone. Gatlin finally short on one, but has his own rebound and a great speed to long. Holy cow, what a pass. Is that Gatlin's ninth? That's nine. And he just hitting every open man that's available. And there have been a few. 37 and 28, Maryland with a spectacular looking first half. 
Garber again to Delaney Rudd with Adkins on him. Bogues missed the shot. Adkins rebound ahead to Gatlin. Two players to beat, and he pulls it back, then gives it to Bias. And Bias missed the shot. Tough play for Bias to have to pull up. And Maryland's really got the break going well now. Delaney Rudd, short on the jumper, his own rebound. And he walked. Wake Forest is kind of getting out of their pattern. We mentioned it's the first team to get their break going. Effectively, it's going to get control of the game. It has been Maryland. Wake Forest has got the small down. Maryland by nine will be back at Cole Fieldhouse in College Park after this word from Budweiser. 24 seconds left to go in the first half. It's Maryland by nine over Wake Forest. Coming up at halftime, a good look at the Wake Forest star Delaney Rudd on one and one for the books. We'll have both of those. You talk about a TV hog. Look at that little girl. She even knew she was on camera. <laughs> She's got to be the cheerleader of the year. And then coming up after that, <laughs> she's oh, very nice. leading the band at all. Oh, look at the curls on that one. How about it? North Carolina State and Wake and uh, Virginia coming up after this. And North Carolina State with a win would tie North Carolina. It'd be the only teams left in the conference with only four losses in the ACC. Maryland out rebounding Wake Forest 21 to 13. They've had 10 offensive boards, Billy. Good job. Lancaster in the game for Wake Forest. Hadn't seen much action this year. And here's the foul on Kenny Green, a blocking foul. That'll be his first. Jeff Baxter has checked in for Maryland. Number 12, junior point guard. See Lenny Bias looking to go ahead baseline. Kenny Green doesn't get over there in time. Good call by the official. Only the fourth team foul. Wake Forest staying back in that zone. Baxter giving Gatlin a breather. It is warm in here. Adkins, nice move to go by Delaney Rudd, and Rudd held him as so, he made the drive. So many times you see a good move off the pass, and that time Adkins made one. He caught the ball and just put it in high gear right away. Delaney Rudd wasn't expecting that type of penetration. That's the 15 foul now. 120 left in the half. Baxter looking for the lob over Bogues. It's a pretty good play to work against Wake Forest. North Carolina does that so well when they set those screens inside on the That's out of bounds right. play. This is Adkins. Neither team in the bonuses yet, as you see. And here is an offensive foul against Maryland, which will put Wake in the bonus. That's number three on Derek Lewis. Well, he'll pick up a few fouls over the course of the year. Long going to take his place. That's one of the few times I've seen him pick up an offensive foul fighting for position. Most of the time he gets caught defensively trying to get an advantage. Lewis has had foul trouble all year long. He's fouled out of four games and had a lot of trouble besides that. Now, there was a case where Delaney Rudd tried to get on the foul line to shoot the fouls. And it was really Thomas that should have been going to the line. And Lefty came steaming off that bench in a hurry. Dennis Calvert in briefly comes back out. Now Thomas is uh, on the line. 61% shooter, nice form on that one. But that's what usually happens. You get the right guy on the line, he goes ahead and uh, drills it. Uh, yesterday we were uh, lauding Mark Price, the fact that he did 47 out of 51 and 31 straight. So he goes to the line and misses. Thomas misses the second, bias for the rebound. Baxter wisely, you see in Bogues in front of him, doesn't try to fight the system, gives it up the branch. Now, there's no sense challenging a man like Bones. It's just, you know, it's just not good basketball to try to prove that you can handle it. Long gets the ball to Baxter. Bones drops back inside. Although I, I thought that Mark Price's play against Tyrone Bogues down in Atlanta was one where he just wanted to say, hey, I can handle you, and, and did so well. Long fed to Baxter. Ball knocked away. Baxter trying to steal it back from Bogues and can't. Bogues has Thomas ahead of the pack. Pass is a little strong. Thomas couldn't hold it. Bogues. It was all Muggsy Bogues had a steal, almost had an assist, and then made a basket. Four points for Bogues is 37 to 31. Let's see if Maryland holds it for the last shot. 20 seconds left. No, Branch won't. Oh, not a good shot. That was a bad play by Branch. The follow by Bias is good. With 20 seconds to go, I don't think Branch realized it and took the off-balance jumper. Well, Adrian had an opportunity to look right at the clock. He was under no pressure whatsoever when he first caught the ball. This is just a bad shot selection, and occasionally Adrian will do that. He just mentally doesn't do what is the proper thing to do in a game, and that can really cost you. And fortunately for Maryland, 
Lenny Bias was at the end of that one. Bias trying for a three-point play, has eight points on the afternoon, make it nine. The foul was on Thomas, his first. So it's 40 to 31 with 14 seconds to go. Jones coming in, Adrian Branch going to sit there. Adrian Branch. Wake Forest in a position here where they want to make sure that Maryland does not get another opportunity to get a shot off. Down to five seconds. Bogues may have to take the shot now. It's a three. Got it into Thomas. Banked it home. Nice play. Nice play by Wake Forest to get the last two points of the ball game. At least a half, and it's 40 to 33. Billy, I can't remember a game where we had so many spectacular looking plays in the first half. Maryland just had some sensational looking numbers. They really did, and they, I, I've got to credit that a lot, not only to the guys that made the end of the play in which it was a bias or Speedy Jones, but to Keith Gatlin. That was a tremendous half. He didn't start the ball game because it is senior day here, but when he came on the court, his ability to run this game was uh, was just outstanding. He is, one, of, in my opinion, one of the best four generals in the country. I've heard some people uh, criticize the idea of starting the seniors, but I think it's a great idea, a great tradition, and I I'm glad they do it. Well, I, I don't know who started it, but it's been going on for a long time, and I think a, a, a guy that's played for you for four years certainly there's an opportunity in his last game to get out there and play. It's 40 to 33, Maryland on top at the half over Wake Forest. 40 to 33. 7, 1982, Maryland home to top-ranked Virginia. Jeff Atkins, the middleman on the break, to Dutch Morley, touch pass to Adrian Branch for the dunk. But still, Maryland trails by one with only three seconds left. Ralph Sampson puts the Cavs up by two. Watch this long pass to Herman Veal in the lane. Up, it bounces in, and we have an overtime game as the Terrapins celebrate early at midcourt. Watch it one more time. The long pass to Veal. He's going to shoot it over Othell Wilson, and the ball caroms into the basket overtime maryland versus virginia adrian branch had 29 on the day and here comes two of them a tough jumper from the foul line it's the winning basket as the terps upset the top right cavaliers and coach lefty drizel celebrates with just cause one of his 500 victories that was definitely one for the books Surprised that Wake Forest has gotten off one more shot. They've been going to the offensive boards pretty well. Rebounds, though. Maryland way in the lead. You wonder where those stats make any sense. You know, you've been out-rebounded by 10 if you're That's Wake right. Forest, and you're shooting 40% to 52. You know, they should be behind by a lot more than they are, so they're still within striking distance there. Turnover's about equal. Nobody going to the free-throw line much. As a matter of fact, it wasn't until the very end of the half that uh, the team's gotten a one-and-one. Green leading the way with uh, 12 points. It's what you expect. He averages 17.4. Lee Garber, the second leading scorer for Wake with uh, with six. And as you see, no one from the Deacons in foul trouble. Maryland, a little different story. Branch with 11, Bias with nine, Jones with eight. That's 28 points out of three players. And they have hit between them 60%, but Branch has two fouls and Lewis has three. There's that cute little kid. Somebody forgot to tell him that he's got Carolina colors on. How did he ever get in this gymnasium? <laughs> Carolina blue shirt. He must be a front runner. They happen to be in first place right now. He is a cute kid. Wake Forest will have the basketball as we start the second half. Here's the offensive rebound story, Billy. I don't know if that tells anymore. Maryland had 11 offensive rebounds, scored 12 points. Wake had seven, scored four points. Well, the stats confused me a little bit at halftime. I'll be honest with you. Just down seven points, and from a statistical standpoint, Wake Forest should be behind by 15 or more. Delaney Rudd short on his jumper. Branch comes down with the ball. To Speedy Jones and back to Branch. Wake comes out man to man. Now they showed zone all the first half. Len Bias double team. Kenny Green got a piece of it and it won't go. Branch had the rebound and then lost it, but it was off Wake Forest out to Maryland. That was a great move by, by Lenny Bias, but you notice that Green did force him to go back over to his left side. Branch on the out-of-bounds play loves that shot. Man. Branch has 13, and Maryland's lead is now nine. And it's Bias headed up on Kenny Green here in the second half. 
Great matchup and sheer physical talent. This is Klein from Garber. Now to Bogues. Gatlin just Gatlin powers, powers over, yeah. doesn't he? Looks like he's seven feet tall. Tough shot by Rudd. Delaney Rudd's follow away jumper won't go. The foul will yeah. go on Lewis. Now what Lenny Bias is motioning to is that there was an official right under the basket. But the official really, I think, got shielded, shielded off here. There's no question Bias pushes off on this rebound. There's the push off. But you notice that the official under the basket did not call it because he couldn't see it. And you're not supposed to call a foul you didn't see. Therefore, the official with a good angle of the shot did call it. I think that was a great piece of officiating. That's why so they don't work as individuals, they work as a team. Kenny Green hits the long jumper to cut the lead back to seven. Uh, Lenny Wirtz did the game we did yesterday, uh, Duke and Georgia Tech, and he made a couple of excellent calls. We caught him on one mistake and ribbed him all night at the airport about it. And you don't catch him in mistakes very often. Gatlin baseline, double team, fouled by Bogues, I believe. Could have been Bogues or Kepley, both are reaching in. I don't know how many fans out here saw the incident in Indiana yesterday where Bobby Knight threw the uh, chair across the floor. But it was interesting, Lenny Wirtz uh, mentioned to me that it would not take three technicals to throw a, a coach out of a game. If that was uh, such an aggressive move, it would be just like a player with a deliberate type play. Flagrant foul. Flagrant foul. It was a flagrant action on the part of the coach, and one is enough to have a coach go to the sideline. Bobby did pick up three and was uh, vanished from the game. That was not a uh, not the kind of thing you want to put in your highlight reel. No. 18-11 to go in the ballgame. Maryland by seven over Wake Forest. This is Klein to Bogues. Kepley. Good screen. Just won't go for him. And another whistle underneath. The foul will go against Lee Garber, reaching in, trying to get that rebound. Wake Forest running their offense very well now. They've got it down to within seven. Doing a good job moving the ball. Everybody moving without the ball. And again, turning it into a half-court type game, which is uh, very much to Wake Forest's advantage. Notice how Wake switches when Maryland passes the ball from guard to guard in the backcourt. They want Bogues on the player with the ball. This is Bias guarded by Kenny Green. I think Wake Forest uh, faked Maryland out a little bit by going to man-to-man -man here in the second half. Bogues takes it away from Jones. Stops on a dime. Gatlin reached in, took it away from him. Garber took it back. Kenny Green has it. And he laid it in. Kenny Green. There's Bias wide open. Green knocks it down and then saved it. Great play by Kenny Green to score at one end, and his man is sprinting to the other, and he catches it. And there's a case where the Wake Forest guards, in, in that case, Kepley should have been back there helping out a little bit, getting a little floor balance. Green has hit seven of his ten shots from the floor and has a game-high 16 for Wake. Margin now is cut down to five at 42-37. Wake Forest in that zone now. Bias free at the baseline. Fake Green, and they got Green hitting Bias on the way down. Good pump fake. So many players now in the college ranks are getting that pump fake right down to a science. Watch how high Green There he's got Green right up in the air. There was the contact. Non-shooting foul, so Maryland will inbound. That was only the third team foul against Wake. Gatlin, who in the first half broke John Lucas's uh, career or single season assist record. Fans are really getting a treat here that like to watch a confrontation, an individual one. Kenny Green and Bias matched up on both ends of the floor. Jones won't go. Garber with a rebound. I'm a little surprised that that Billy had taken so much out of them playing defense. Garber. Yes, and also you have a problem of getting in foul trouble. Now, Wake Forest has done quite a job coming out here man to man, but it is going to wear them down. I think they're a team that's got to play a little bit of zone because they're not very deep. And it, and it requires so much energy on the part of Green and Bogues and Garber offensively that if they've got to chase defensively, they might not have a, a lot left. Of course, they're deeper now than they were two weeks ago. Oh, that's for sure. Got some people who are actually semi-healthy out there right now. They're down by five. Kepley. Long go, Bias with a big rebound. Kepley usually a pretty good shooter, but that layoff, you know, takes your timing away. Branch cut off at the baseline and brings it back outside to Gatlin. 16-15 to go. 
in the game, and it's Maryland by five. The Terps trying to get to 500. Bad pass by Bias, picked off inside, and Klein almost lost it, and Green picks it up, looks for both. Kenny Green's one of those fellows that physically has big enough hands to start emulating the plays of Dr. J, because he can pick that ball right up off the dribble. Fakes his shot. Here's an offensive foul inside on Chuck Kepley. Players are a little tired on both squads right now. Starting to drag. I think the heat's getting to them a little bit. The second half has uh, worn them out. And we have a timeout with 15.52 left to go in the ballgame. It's Maryland over Wake Forest, 42 to 37. Wake Forest down by five, but they have cut into that Maryland lead as the pet man continues to play. We have not seen uh, very good shooting as you see in the second half, and we have seen none of the fireworks we had in the first half. Well, we have, you know with the camera zeroed in on that, it turned out to be sheet music, and I was thinking that they were zeroing in on, on a coach's bench. I looked down and said, that's the craziest looking play. Then I realized it was shoot, sheet music. It was faked out completely on that one. Oh, good hands by Adrian Branch. Against the press, gets it to Gatlin. Bogues goes right after the ball. I don't Branch think picks Wake, up his dribble again. Mike, I don't think Wake Forest can play man-to-man -man at this speed the entire second half. They're gonna have to go to that zone some just to rest. Of course, that has been the uh, best thing about their team is the defensive pressure they can put on other teams. But you're right, it's got to wear you out. Branch, really with a hot hand today. Adrian Branch just really turning it on. He has 15 of Maryland's 44. And Branch has the hot hand, and as you pointed out to me during that intermission, three for 15 is the combined shooting of Rudd and, and Vogue. So Wake Forest not getting much out of their backcourt from a standpoint of good shooting efficiency. And Branch is at seven of 10. Inside the 15 minute mark, it's Maryland by seven. This is Bogues jump shot, in and out. Rebound to Lewis. Head to Branch. Nice bounce pass to Len Bias. Turnaround jumper won't go, and the rebound to Klein. Again, though, he was forced to shoot that jumper going to the left. And Len Bias, he got away with one because he pushed Kenny Green. Got him right in the chest. Bias kind of laughing about it. He's wanting to break the other end. We'll see the play coming up right here. Bogue's going to throw the lob. Bias going to give Kenny oh. Green the push and moved him right out. So Maryland gets the ball, leading by seven. Gatlin gets around Bogues, kicks it back to Branch. Missed the shot, and he's fouled by Delaney Rudd. Rudd hit him after the ball was already gone. Picks up his second. Adrian going to go ahead and take it out. It's still not into one and one. Really not a wise foul to make contact after a player has released that shot because there's nothing you're going to do. Gatlin gets the ball at the baseline and spins and hits it. Good quick pass by Adrian Branch. Wake Forest was just setting up their defense. Six points for Gatlin, who averages eight and a half points a game, and he's hit three of four shots from the field. Once again, a nine-point lead. Every time Wake gets close, Maryland just pulls away. Rudd misses a shot. Lewis had the ball knocked out of his hands. He was the last to touch it, and it will go to Wake Forest. It's another thing about coming from behind, Billy. A lot of times you expend so much energy just to get even, you've got nothing left after that. Green's jumper won't go. Branch with a rebound. And that's the shot Kenny Green likes. Gatlin ahead to Branch in the corner to Bias. Lewis wants a ball in the lane, and he's fouled by Klein. Lewis made an excellent cut there. Lenny Bias was able to hit him. Pass, uh, probably not much Lewis could have done with the ball had he caught it. There was Klein uh, out of position and beat to the spot defensively. Two time, or two personal fouls on Klein. I was going to say two-time West Virginia Player of the Year. This is Gatlin, Maryland by nine to Speedy Jones. Double team, Bogues stripped him. And then Bogues saves it, but he stepped on the sideline. Oh, he is just cat quick. Well, the fans can't really believe that he came out of nowhere to make that play and thought he had the foul. And let him, he is something. Well, he comes out of nowhere when he stands up. That, well, I'll tell you another thing about Tyrone Bogues that people don't realize, he is extremely strong. Bias, long range jumper. 
And there's Lenny Baez drifting to the right. When you get him going to the right, he buries him. You've got to force him to come back to the left zone. That's 11 points for Len Bias, and it's 48-37. Maryland now by 11. Blake has hit only two of 10 shots in this half, Billy. Traveling on Garber, and the wheels are starting to come off. I think Wake Forest is get, expending so much energy defensively in that man-to-man -man that they really have nothing left when they get down the other end of the court. Third turnover the Deacons have committed in this half. Clock not yet a factor, full 13 minutes to go. Bogues trying to get to Lewis for a steal, can't do it. Lewis showing some pretty good ball handling in the opening court there. You know, usually all the statistical categories in this league are so close. Bogues has 50 steals more than anybody else in the league this year. And I would imagine uh, in shot blocking, Lewis is up there to the point that he has a pretty good lead. John Sally's probably number two. I think Sally is about 10 or 12 behind him, but uh, Sally's been a premier shot blocker ever since he came in. Lewis, the freshman, this is Branch. A little short on the jumper, kept alive inside. Now Garber with a rebound. Garber is tough. He just gets it done. Here's Bogues fouled by Branch. And Branch gave him a little hip. Adrian Branch. That was a good foul because Wake Forest had an easy two on the other end. This is a fine move by Adrian Branch as he went to the inside. Everybody going up in the boards, and there's Garber again. Can get about three inches off the ground and ends up getting a rebound. He gets good position. We have a timeout with 12 minutes and 16 seconds to go in the ballgame. Maryland now up by 11 points. And I don't know who called that timeout, Billy. We'll try to find out when we come back. 12-16 left in the ballgame. It's Maryland 48, Wake 37. Back after this. Coming up next, North Carolina State against Virginia State all at once. Uh, chance to tie for the conference lead, and Virginia's been playing exceptional basketball. Billy. They really have. They're both on win streaks. Uh, NC State with five in a row. Virginia with uh, four in a row. NC State has beaten five teams in a row that are in the top 20. Now, that's... Uh, that's really some outstanding basketball. And they deserve a lot of credit for coming back from all the troubles they've had. I, I really agree with that. Jim Valvano's got them playing really good basketball right now. Wake Forest has to do better than two out of 10 to get back in this ball game. Right now they're down by 11 points. Maryland's played some pretty good defense against them today. They have good man-to-man, -man, and Wake Forest has played good man-to-man -man on their end of the court. They just haven't had anything left to go on the offensive end. Gatlin dropping off of Bogues. This is Garber, guarded by Branch. Kenny Green with bias on him. Got him in the air, then it's blocked by Lewis. Rebound by Thomas, and missed the layup. Another tip won't go. And Lewis with a rebound. That's a tough break yep. for them. Thomas was just too over-anxious. And there again was a case of Lewis coming over as a secondary defender, able to block that shot. Lewis inside to Speedy Jones. Jones doesn't make too many mistakes. He's been a sharp addition for Maryland. Gatlin, a little half jump, half set. He's hit four out of five from the floor, I believe, and eight points. Uh, for Wake Forest, they've got to get Delaney Rudd moving here. He has not, he had 26 in the first game. Hadn't been able to do much in this game. Here he goes. He just can't hit it. And bias outlet pass is intercepted by Bogues. Lenny Rudd's going to keep shooting, which is a good idea. If you're a shooter, keep putting yeah, them up right. there. Rudd cuts the lead back to 11, and they've been up to 13. The lead, the biggest margin Maryland has had today, 10.57 to go. Oh, oh nice. Three steals. That's Lewis. We said a few minutes ago, Lewis showed some dribbling ability in the open court. He did it again. Nobody picked him up. Lewis has six, only averages 5.8 points a game. Green to Rudd. Back to Kenny Green. A little strong. Tip by Thomas. Won't go. Bogues with a rebound. Bogues doing a good job slowing things up, trying to get Wake Forest in that half-court game. Green guarded by Bias. These guys have both worked very hard today. Rudd trying to penetrate. Dishes it off. And half shot, half pass. He just got caught up in the air. Ahead to Branch. Too far. Out of bounds. Wake Forest ball. Now, Lefty a little upset with Lewis there, trying to do a little bit too much with that ball. But he showed he can put that ball on the floor and run with it. Thomas goes out of the ball game, and checking in is uh, Garber. He'll go back to the pivot at 6'5". 
Carl Tacey doesn't have a lot of choices in the middle. He may have to use some timeouts to keep his club rested. You know, coaches today very seldom call a timeout to rest a team. Mostly it's for strategy. Well, with the Green heat in here today and with that very short bench, he may have to do it a little. Kenny Green has 18 points. 9.45 to go in the game. Still Maryland by 11. Here comes Bogues. Takes it away from Lewis. And this kid can jump. And he lays it in. Muggsy Bogues with four steals. And he can turn a game around all by himself. Well, Lewis is getting the lesson. Delaney Rudd going after Branch. And they'll call an offensive foul on Adrian Branch. Right in front of Lenny Wirtz. And he said Branch hooked him. Good timeout call by Lefty Drizel. His team is starting to go one-on-one. -on -one. They've gotten completely out of their offensive concept, and he's upset. Here we're going to see that steal. Lewis turns his back. Muggsy Bogues makes the good steal, and even though Lewis is a great shot blocker and has speed, he can't catch up with Muggsy Bogues, who lays it up high in the glass. 52-43 and Wake Forest will have the basketball when we come back. 9.27 left in the game from College Park, Maryland. It's the Terps over the Deacons by nine. Adrian Branch has left the ball game with 9.27 to go and a nine point lead for Maryland. Branch picked up his fourth personal foul. There's a good look at the young man playing his uh, final home game here in College Park. That was a tough call to pick up your fourth one on. Well, it was, but he was being challenged on the outside, and he tried to make it a one-on-one -on -one game between he and Delaney Rudd, and all he had to do was stay in the offense. Rudd still putting up the shot, and that was a tough one. Very, very tough shot. The rebound goes to Wake Forest. Stay tuned at the end of the game. We'll be picking a Holly Farms player of the game from each school. Big possession here. Wake is down by nine. Klein. Tough shot again by Rudd. Delaney Rudd now two out of six from the floor in the second half. He's hit two tough ones. But what you have to like about him, Mike, is that the guy is a scorer, and he's proven that even though he had a rough first half, that he can come back and keep putting up the shots on a positive basis. Crowd trying to get Maryland back in this. Lewis, low post, turnaround jumper. Nice shot over Klein. Lewis with eight points in the margin back to nine. It's one of the best games I've seen Lewis play offensively. He really is. He's another guy showing a positive motion, putting up that shot, and when he gets the ball in his hands. Garber outside, gets it to Bogues. Delaney Rudd working on Atkins, turns. That should be no basket. I thought that was goaltending. Yeah, that, that was definitely in the cylinder. No call made, and Wake Forest making a run here. Well, the three officials apparently disagreed with us. And that's happened before. <laughs> yeah, hasn't it? 54-47. Adkins gets it to Bias. Kenny Green with a huge day for Wake Forest. Bias misses. Rebound. Kepley just keeps fighting in there. Rather, Garber gets it to Bogues. Delaney Rudd wants the basketball. In and out. Rebound to Lewis. The intensity level picking up. Now it's time for Maryland. Lewis going to have to bring it up himself. Bogues chasing. Rudd reaches in. Almost got the steal. Lewis saying to Atkins, come back there and help me out. Atkins is the second guard in his case. Now, what happened, Atkins had been able to break away clean, but nobody saw him, so he was actually 90 feet away. Lewis now has eight rebounds. Here's Delaney Rudd on the break, gets it to Bogues. Bogues goes in and had, had no chance and passed it off. The rebound to Lewis, the foul will be on Garber. But Bogues got caught that time. Yeah, he made, he really made a spectacular pass here, and Garber just wasn't expecting it. Again, you start talking about that fatigue setting in a little bit. I was surprised that Bogues tried to take that. You'll watch this. He turns this into a pass as opposed to a shot at the last minute. It was a tough one for Garber to hang on to, and he commits the foul. Yeah, he put Garber on the hot seat with that. Yeah, he did. 54-47. Lewis goes to the free throw line. Hits the first. 63% shooter on the year. He has nine points, eight rebounds today. Freshman playing uh, better and better as the season winds down. But as he pointed out earlier, Maryland has been out-rebounded on the year by its opponents. 
This is one game that they're going to have a fairly big advantage. Free throw missed, but Maryland controls the loose ball. The Terps lead by eight, chance to go up by ten. Adkins, who already holds the school record for consecutive games played, gets it to Speedy Jones. Shot won't go. Rebound to Lewis. Whistle. Foul Boy, against White. Boy, Lewis is doing a great job on the board. Klein is guarding him, and Klein can't box him off because Lewis just goes up so much higher. Shot goes up. Lewis with inside position. Gets the rebound and gets fouled. Foul on Klein is his third. And Lewis will go back to the line. Klein had been out uh, for, I guess, about 10 days with that ankle injury. Now Garver going to take a well-needed rest. He has really put out. And Thomas comes back in. Lewis has hit one out of two from the line. Nine points, nine rebounds. You know, we look at what the, these teams have yet to face. For Maryland, they have to go to NC State and go to Virginia. Two very difficult games the rest of the way. You've got Duke has to play Clemson and North Carolina. They've got North Carolina at home. At home. And, and Clemson at home. Georgia Tech has North Carolina down in the Army. That's their only game left. NC State with Virginia later today. Wake Forest at home and Maryland at home. So pretty good move for NC State. And North Carolina has both Duke and Georgia Tech on the road. That's oh, tough. That is tough. Maryland goes to the zone. Maryland up by 10. Klein, good perimeter shooter, buried that one. 57 to 49. Klein has a half dozen. Here's the full court pressure. Gatlin, nice pass to Lewis. Back to Gatlin. Beat the press very well that time. Jones. I think Gatlin's had one turnover today. Had the ball knocked out of his hands by Bogues, and it will be Maryland ball. Lefty and Gatlin both asking for a foul on that play. Clock becoming a factor now with 6.24 to go. Won't be long till every tick means something. Bias long range jumper. Lewis almost had another rebound. You notice he got Bias going to his left again. This is Wake, Rudd. Wake Forest has done an excellent job here since the opening part of the ball game, forcing Lenny Bias left. Carl Tacey doesn't miss much, does he? No. Good scouting. You know, scouting it and telling your players and then getting them to do it are two different <laughs> things. Right. But Wake Forest has executed on that move very well defensively. Klein down the lane, kicks it back out to Bogues. Shot clock is at 15 seconds, and Klein from long range again. He can hit a half a dozen of those for you. Yeah, excellent pure shooter. Klein is four out of seven from the floor, eight points, and we have a ball game again at 57 to 51. Adkins working on Rudd. Back out to Gatlin. Speedy Jones fouled by Green. Delaney Rudd arguing the call, but uh, Jones may have pushed off a little, but he got clobbered by Green. Yeah, in the if, if Kenny Green hadn't been quite so aggressive, he might have got by. Now, Klein was trying to help out on the other side, and that's how he got out of oh. position. I don't need much question about that call. They're in the one and one. Cherry Long will check in, and Lewis goes out for a breather. He gets a nice hand and deserves it. It's been a good day for the freshman. I think that this crowd really shows the, the solid backing Maryland has for their basketball program. I mean, you're talking about a beautiful, beautiful Sunday afternoon here in the D.C. area, and these people coming out and supporting it, and it which they have throughout Lefty's career. You bet. He has, uh, people forget, before Lefty came here, there never were seats around this court. Only the permanent seats were here. And they used to fill about, you know, 3,500 to 5,000 right. people playing eight or nine home games a year. Now he packs them in uh, year after year. I hope he got a good raise out of that. <laughs> He's been the biggest draw around since he came here. Maryland by eight again. Tough shot for Thomas. I think he shocked Bias with, with that shot. You don't see Thomas put up many. May have shot Carl Tacey in the process. Five points for Thomas. The lead is six. Almost intercepted by a hustling Mark Klein. We almost had a souvenir. Maryland is not doing a good job right now, Mike, in, in the fact that against the press, they've got too much of a spread. The front court players are running all the way down the court, and the back court guys are left with a passing lane that's much too long. And when that passing lane is long, obviously the defenders can slip in there with the steals. I think Maryland's trying to do one thing, Billy. There goes Bias. Oh, what a tough shot that was, and it won't go. Ahead to Kenny Green. Look out for the show that might come. Rudd lays it up, won't go. Delaney Rudd is down, and he's hurt. Delaney Rudd really whacked the floor hard. 
I was watching on that play for uh, for Kenny Green to stuff the shot. Delaney Rudd, as you know, has had problems with that knee. I don't know what this one was because I didn't see him hit the floor. I heard it. Yes, I did too. And he is in uh, obvious distress. Hopefully it's one of those well, things where he had we'll the wind knock out of the play coming up. Looks like we're going to have a pretty good angle at it. He comes in, he gets bumped. They came right down on his back. Could have had the wind knocked out of him. Yeah, possible. There you see him on the floor. It doesn't look like it has anything to do with the legs, which will be a good sign for Delaney Rudd. But he may have a sore back or head for a while. He's been one of those guys has been banged up since the start of his career. He definitely got fouled on the play, but there was no call on it. You know what I think would have been a good play for Delaney Rudd? Realizing it had Kenny Green coming. That's right. Just lay that thing up on the board and let Kenny Green go stuff it. Because you know he would have. Yes, right. He, he's coming down behind. He's got that terrific leaping ability in those hands. He can put it away. You saw what the uh, senior from Hollister, North Carolina, had done so far. Eight points, <laughs> five rebounds. Lenny Bias giving a little talk to the official there. And good time to get your team over in the side. You've got a, a free time out here if you're Maryland. And maybe a long one. Good time to get organized. 4.44 to go. You're up by just six points. Wake Forest making a, a real ball game out of this one. Now, Delaney Rudd really landed hard. You can hear the crack all the way over here. And we hope that uh, he seems to be moving a little bit better. At least he's lying flat on his back now. He wouldn't uh, earlier, right after he hit him, he hit the floor. We certainly hope he's going to be all right. And we'll check in on Delaney Rudd for you. Right now, we're going to pause for a word from our sponsors with 4.44 to go in the game. It's Maryland by six. Over Wake. Delaney Rudd back of the Wake Forest bench with his team down by six, and he was walking very gingerly as he left the court. I don't blame him. Just the echo of the sound that he made when he hit the floor would be enough to make you sit up and take notice. And now the crowd asking for the Wake Forest team to come back on the court. Now, Mike, the way they're lined up out there, it looks like a foul was called, but I didn't see a foul called in that last play. We're told uh, by John Aronoff they call it on Jeff Adkins. So it's going to be I didn't Kenny see it Green. either. Kenny Green was following up on the play, and evidently there was a foul called. ACC basketball on the Raycom Sports Jefferson Pilot Teleproduction Network has been brought to you in part by Mazda. Green's free throw is good, and that cuts the lead down to five. Kenny Green got a two-shot foul. I, I believe, looking at Delaney Rudd, that he's going to be able to get back in this ballgame. I think so, too. Free throw by Green is good again. Kenny Green with 22. Here comes the full-court press. Gatlin against Bose gets it to Branch. He's fouled by Kepley. Almost looked like an intentional foul, but I don't see no, how it could have been. No, I think in Kepley's case, he just was out of position there. He had the sideline to use as an extra defender, but just didn't move his feet quickly enough. So Adrian Branch will go to the free throw line. No other player in Maryland history has ever made more free throws than this gentleman, who is sure to go high in the NBA draft. Shoots those little side saddle. Adrian has a very unusual technique. He shoots across his body. Not very many fellas are effective doing that. Not a very good idea for a young player to copy this style. But Adrian has been playing for so many years and has it down to a science. Number nine free throw shooter in the conference. Hits both. He has 17 points. And Maryland's lead is back at six. Four and a half minutes left. And the crowd right into it. Maryland man to man. Wake Forest patiently running their offense. Kenny Green looking for some help. Goes to Kepley now to Bowles. Why Green inside, Bias on him. That's a good job by Bias. Beating Kenny Green to the spot after he had been screened off. Bias and Green on each other, but haven't seen any cheap stuff between those guys. Oh, no, they're just playing good, solid basketball. That's right. Klein, shot clock is at six. Short. Rebound to Lewis. There's where Wake Forest really missed Delaney Rudd. Now he's asking Coach Casey if he can get back in the game. They really need him. Branch to Lewis. Double team gets it back to Branch. Charlie Thomas. Little contact and no whistle. Gatlin. Inside to Speedy Jones. Nice move by Jones. Jones really has a physical advantage over Klein. He's much quicker and jumps much higher. Jones has 12 points. Maryland back up to eight. He's hit five out of 10 shots from the floor. 
So Wake Forest can get close, but they can't believe it. Well, with that lineup they have out on the court right now, you've either got to go to Klein or you've got to go to Green, and not much else in the way of offensive potential. You've got both Barber and Delaney Rudd on the bench. I think Wake Forest ought to be thinking about getting both of them back in there quickly. Here's Green with Bias on top of him to Klein. Started by Speedy Jones, and they'll call Speedy Jones, I believe, for the foul. Little hand touch. The only player in foul trouble is uh, Adrian Branch, who's already on the court. Good call, Coach. You got them both back in the ball game. Yep. Here comes Garber and Delaney Rudd. Good move by Carl Tacey. Had to get a little more firepower in, and plus they both had a rest, so they're ready for a stretch That's run right. here. And it's time for it. 3.02 left to go in the game. Maryland 63, Wake 55. There's another foul on Jones as they ran a good play and got Garber free at the baseline. And Three on gonna, Jones. And that's going to go ahead and set up the one and one for both teams the rest of the way. Jones out of Allegheny Community College. Garber at the line. Garber at the line. There's a bus Seventh leading free throw shooter in the conference, 78.2%. Solid player. Just doesn't make, he's not flashy at all, but doesn't make any mistakes. Has seven points and five rebounds this afternoon. I believe if you're uh, an outstanding team, it's always great to have role players. Sure is. And Lee Garber is the perfect guy for that. As you said, he just doesn't make mistakes. He stepped out of bounds and walked. Gatlin. Lewis made a tough inbounds pass, and Gatlin was trying to fight with both just to keep it alive, and they turned it over. Again, Mike, Maryland is just setting themselves up to the point that they have such long passing lanes that the press is really effective against them. Their front court player is going to have to come back up a little closer to half court to cut down on that long pass. It's 63-57. Wake back within six. They've gotten as close as four, but no closer. Delaney Rudd down the lane. That's Basket it. is good, and a blocking foul called against Maryland. A chance for a three-point play. Well, Rudd may have gotten lucky with that call. He really did. He comes right off the screen by Kenny Green, goes down the lane. Lenny Bias didn't get there in time. Excellent call by the official. Although there was contact, Bias had not established a defensive position here. He was moving underneath. Delaney Rudd in double figures with 10. He's hit two out of two from the line. A free throw here makes it a three-point ball game with 2.44 to go. Seems like Maryland became uh, to the point where, that they felt the game was a little easy for them. You know, when they scored some of those spectacular uh -huh. plays. Since that time, they really haven't concentrated. That Here's the foul. double team and the foul. Charlie Thomas just ran right into Adrian Branch. I don't know what he was uh, talking to his teammate about, but he, he fouled on that one. Well, Carl Tacey didn't like it much either. He's shaking his head there a little bit. Puts Adrian on the line. Adrian, a real streak foul shooter. When he gets that rhythm going, well, he can bury him. Three out of three this afternoon. Missed a couple of big ones earlier this year. Missed that one. Loose ball, Wake has it, still loose, bodies all over the floor, and Thomas comes up with it. 63-60, the Deacons can cut it to one. You really like to see players go down on the floor. Carl Tacey wants to take that timeout to organize this 228. This is some comeback by this ball club, Billy. And it, it points out something that you said at the top of our telecast. There have been a couple of cases this year you thought Wake Forest had no chance to compete on that particular day. And those were the days they won. I thought they were dead when they were down by 13 points this afternoon. Now they're back within uh, two possessions of taking the lead. They really are. I, I think that Maryland has gotten a little complacent. They got away from their running game, which is what gave them that good shot in the arm in the first half. Looking at the ACC standings, as we said before, a lot of teams still in the hunt. North Carolina at the top, but they've got two games remaining, both of them on the road against really top flight teams in Georgia Tech and Duke. NC State, uh, they have a chance to go back home and, and do real well, but they've got that tough game coming up against Virginia in a, in a couple of minutes. Georgia Tech has only one game left in the conference, and that's against North Carolina at home. Duke in a good shape because they play two games at home. And Maryland showing that they can play with a lot of people, and so can 
Clemson, Wake Forest, and Virginia. There's no weak sister in the league this you year. Bet. There really isn't. And do we have one coming up Wednesday night? North Carolina and Georgia Tech from the Omni in Atlanta. It's been sold out for a long time. And that might go a long way toward determining who's going to win. You know, Billy, no team has ever won the ACC regular ch season championship with more than three losses until this year. The team that eventually wins it may have five. That's very possible, or at least ties for it. I, you know, it's almost probable that they'll have five and be in a tie. Maryland has turned the ball over eight times in the second half. Wake Forest only twice. And, of course, this is the strength of this Wake Forest team. They've been doing this all year to people. They really have. And, again, Maryland got away from going fast break. They've been very complacent here in this stretch where they've given up a good working margin. And now they're going to have to battle for their lives. Two minutes, 20 seconds to go in the ball game. Maryland by three. This is Bogues. Has not shot the ball in a long time. And Gatlin's giving him the jump shot because he's trying to help out on Kenny Green. Bogues has got to look for the jumper. Garber looks for Green. He's guarded by Bias. To Delaney Rudd. Shot clock is at four. I don't think they realize it. Two. He got it off in time and almost made it. Thomas follow shot and scored. Oh, what a big rebound by Charlie Thomas. I think Bogues is the only one on the team that realized the shot clock was a factor. I think you're right. It's a one-point ball game, 142 left. This is some comeback by Wake Forest. Gatlin works it inside to Bias, back to Gatlin. Bias wants the ball. Green shoving on him. And they'll call Kenny Green for the foul. And he complains about it, but... He, he thought that ball went out to uh, Bias's hands. Kenny says, hey, we've been pushing pretty well all day in here, and that was nothing more than a touch oh, foul. We'll see it. Oh, that was pretty much of a touch foul. Wake Forest has scored seven straight points to cut the deficit to one. Lenny Bias will go to the free throw line. 11 points on the afternoon for Bias, and three out of three from the strike. Hit that one. Big shot. Oh, Lenny Bias looks so cool on that line. Second free throw, airborne, and got it. And Lenny will be one of those fellas in high contention for player of the year in this Lenny Coach Conference. be a tough choice if you needed one shot between he and Mark Price. I'd let either one of them take it. Bogues fakes the shot, a three-point lead again. Rudd from long range won't go. Lewis rebound. Good defense that time by Adrian Branch. He stayed right with Delaney Rudd. 107 to go. Ten rebounds for Lewis this afternoon. 59 seconds left. Maryland by three. And Jones almost threw it away. And then Delaney Rudd has to commit the foul as he bangs into Branch. That's three on Rudd. Now that was a good effort by Rudd. And he did commit the foul. Delaney Rudd is third. So again, Branch will go back to the line. Again, Mike, the spacing of the Maryland players, the distance from the passer to the potential receiver, has been so wide today, it's really opened up a lot of opportunities for Wake Forest to steal that ball. Maryland players are kind of standing still and waiting for the ball to come to them, and that really gives the defense an edge. Thomas checks out, so Carl Tacey has Green, Klein, Garber, Rudd, and Bogues on the court right now. Branch now three out of four from the line. Remember, he missed the front end of a one-and-one one last time, but got this one. And that's a four-point lead for Maryland with 55 seconds left. Michael, we were talking about the standings. One of the other things that's important to all these teams now to play well is that outside competition. Georgia Tech has that game going on the road against Oklahoma. Oklahoma. And really, they play not only for Georgia Tech in that game, but they play for all the other teams in the conference as far as bids to postseason play is concerned. Bogue streaking down court, pulls up for the jumper, won't go, and the rebound to Lewis, and he's fouled by Tyrone Bogue. A Muggsy Bogue's had his shot. Yes, he did. Went through the entire Maryland team to get it off. He just comes down court so quickly, I don't think anybody has a chance to turn their head. He's in the lane. That's the second foul on Bogues, and the Maryland players are probably saying, I know he's touched me 35 <laughs> times today. <laughs> and he swipes at everything. Lewis will go to the line. He is three out of four. Maryland with a chance to uh, build on a four-point lead right here with 46 seconds left. Lewis misses, 
Wake Forest still alive here is a whistle. The foul will go against Wake Forest. I think it's going to be Delaney Rudd. He got underneath Speedy Lewis. That'll be four on Rudd. Tough break there as the long rebound came out. Jones goes back to the line. 12 points on the afternoon for Speedy Jones. Free throw is good. He's a cool customer, isn't he? He really is. Has an excellent release on that shot. It's a three for three. Shooting 78% on the year. He's in the line 45 times. And as you've pointed out, Mike, he's been a real solid addition to the Maryland team. Another shot for Jones. The lead goes back to six. Lake had gotten to within one point. And Carl Tacey uses a timeout to stop the clock with 41 seconds left. So Maryland has answered every challenge so far. There's 41 seconds left to go in the game. Maryland by six. I think Forrest can be a very costly one. They only have one left now. You'd like to go ahead and score and use your timeout to stop the clock. In, the, in this case, they stopped the clock before they scored. So now they only have one left. You're down six. And even if they score here, Maryland's in a pretty good position to not allow Wake Forest to stop the clock unless they foul. Klein with the ball. Wake Forest cannot afford to be quite this deliberate. There's only 30 seconds left. Kenny Green, good. And there they use that yep. last time out, though. And that, only, that means now they have nothing left. That's why I really felt they'd have been smart to go ahead and try to get the shot up first, then call the timeout, and they still have one left. Big day for Kenny Green. 10 out of 16 from the floor, 24 points. Most of that with another great athlete right with him, Len Bias. That's right. And not a lot of help inside scoring. One of the things that people have to realize when you're a Kenny Green, you don't have a postman that's also scoring with you. So the defense on the other team is not only playing you with one man, everybody else is shading over on your side. It's always, makes it tough. it's always fun to play what if. What if he had a, a kid in there who was 6'11", 245 to play center? You wonder what Carl Tacey would do with something like that. Uh, but I guess you never find out till they go on to the pros or another program or another situation. Well, I, I would have to say that's true as far as the actual fact, but I'll tell you right now, if Kenny Green did have a 6'11 score going with him, he'd be even better than he is right now. I would sure think so. People are packed into Coalfield House this afternoon on a beautiful 70-degree day, and I guess uh, just for some of the plays they saw in the first half, they got their money's worth, and now they're seeing a big finish with 28 seconds left. Maryland up by four. Terps will have the basketball, and Wake Forest is out of timeouts. Of course, they have the one, the ultimate weapon, Muggsy Bugs. If you need a steal, he's got to go to. Well, they can go for the steal. They, Maryland has uh, responded by putting Baxter into the lineup, taking Lewis out of there, which gives him an extra ball handler. And it'll be a matter now. I think Wake Forest is just going to go ahead and foul the rest of the way because they need the two possessions to get back in this one. And there are no weak sisters out there to go after. Well, you probably, if you're going to have to make a choice, you probably go after Baxter to foul. Bias with the ball, Bogues on him. Clock ticking away, oh, 24 seconds left. What Jones showed you something there, didn't he? That ball was thrown about three feet over Jones' head, and he was still able to go up and get it. That's all for Delaney Rudd. And Delaney Rudd, who took a big fall earlier, has fouled out of the ball game. Gets a nice uh, hand for the leaves with 11 points, five rebounds. It's a tough kid. Now, Carl Dacey has got to put in a shooter here. He's going to go with Thomas, another rebounder. I thought he'd come back maybe with Kepley, although Kepley hadn't shot well today. To try to get another score in the game. Jones will go to the free throw line with 23 seconds left. Maryland up by four. Certainly important free throws. And he's hit all four of his attempts so far today. Shooting almost 80% coming in. Get that one. Boy, no motion whatsoever. So not only does he have a good high percentage, he's the kind of guy that has such good motion, good feel for the foul shot, that you know he is an 80% plus free throw shooter in his career. He just is going to be, regardless of whether he made that one or not. Missed that one. The ball tipped out of bounds off of Wake Forest with 20 seconds left. Charlie Thomas 
trying to save it and can't do it. Maryland up by five. Now Wake Forest has got to foul almost on the inbounds pass. They cannot afford to let any more time go off this clock because they need two more baskets. Lefty Grizzell gets Lewis out and Baxter back in for ball handling. Inbound to Branch, goes ahead to Baxter. They keep the ball moving and it's knocked out of bounds with 15 seconds left. I'm surprised Wake Forest is not following immediately on the pass in. Desperation time now, they're down by five. Got a foul right away. Into Bias, they're just letting the clock run. And they have no chance. Baxter, Thomas slaps at him. I don't Seven understand Seven seconds one. left. There was a case where nine seconds went off the clock before the foul took place. And really, they could have come into the foul in the very first pass and let one second go off the clock. Well, they sealed the fate there. Six seconds left, 69 to 64. And Maryland will raise its record to six and six in the ACC, 21 and 10 overall. Point lead. Jones back at the line. Well, I'm really jinxing. Really jinxing Jones. I said he's 80 plus. He's just two in a row. <laughs> that one off the front of the rim when you don't ever want him to be short. Uh, he'll write you a letter. And he hits another one off the front of the rim. Bias with a rebound. Just covers it up. Four seconds left. They'll call another foul. This one may be on Garber. Another pointing out of bounds. Oh, they call it a jump ball and gave Maryland possession. Good idea for Gatlin to throw it all the way back court. And they said Len Bias no, stepped across, no, 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 no. stepped across the back court line. They said he caught it in front court and stepped back across. Uh, first of all, Lenny Bias should have been positioned all the way back down court. That way, you know, they could have thrown it back court. counts and as you see lefty Grisell going towards center court to shake hands with Carl Tacey of Wake Forest 69-66